So if you were with us yesterday, you'll be unpacking the mystery of hide and seek. What makes hide and seek enjoyable? What makes all games enjoyable? What's that? Well, that's the question today on the With Joe Weeby podcast. What makes a game? What is a game? Now, if you remember last time we talked about the reality that the games that are too easy and not interesting, and the games that are too hard, uh, just piss us off, basically. So what is going on? What is this dynamic? Why is it that when we play hide and seek and are found too easily, why is that disappointing when the outcome of the game is to find it? The reality is with hide and seek is that the whole game is attention. So when my cousins and I used to play this when we were younger, when you're the seeker, there's the tension. You're, you're tiptoeing around the house, thinking, imagining, looking in every nook, cranny and corner, wondering where everyone's hiding, right? And it's this, you never know when exactly you're going to find one of your lurking victims. When you're hiding, on the other hand, you've got that tension. You hear them enter the room. You see them through the crack in the cupboard door. And you're thinking to yourself and asking, are they going to find me? Are they going to think to look here? You're keeping very still and very quiet and trying to play that game. And it's a game of tension. It's a game of pursuit, of chase. And when we're found, it's quite simply the release of tension. That's it. Games are a build-up of tension, and they reach a climax, just like any other climax, which is a release of tension. Now, the, the strength of the Climax is just basically related to the, the quality of that buildup of tension. It's why marketing that builds on suspense and mystery, builds up intrigue, is so powerful and works so well on us. It's engaging us in this little game. It's why people enjoy cat and mouse. Now, where we encode games wrong where we misunderstand why we're playing the game is when we look at the climax and we isolate it from the context of the journey, of the build-up of that tension. Does that make sense? So what we think we enjoy about hide-and-seek is finding them, uh, or th that is the jubilant moment, that's the release. But it cannot exist independently of that search, if that makes sense. So... You know, like I said in the previous episode, when we're standing right in front of the person who's counting and seeking, not making the game fun and building up for them and just falling straight into their trap, being sarcastic and, and cheeky and lazy all at the same time, we betray the game. We betray the tension. There's no tension and it's too easy, right? So it's not actually the outcome, is it? It's the journey, right? We've talked about that in various ways over the past episodes before we start talking about the game. We talk about achievement and all these other things. It's, it's the release of tension and we mistake that to be the whole experience. If Olympians didn't have to uh, train and, and wait four years between the, each Olympics event, would a gold medal be as precious? You know, if actors didn't go on such long journeys to win the Academy Award, would Academy Award be so precious? And that's they're just some of the, the top of many examples, but it's always that journey. It's, you know, I've had the joy and this satisfaction and this pleasure of supporting teams uh, in sport, which have <laughs> consistently disappointed, but luckily relieved the ongoing disappointment while I've been alive. So in soccer, Liverpool, right? In, in the NRL in Australia, uh, the, the Dragons, St. George, Illawarra Dragons, both, or 
Dragons was a 31-year wait for a premiership and Liverpool was a 30-year wait for a premiership, uh, for a title. And it's the ongoing disappointment that both teams got close so many times over the years, over many years, very historic, proud clubs, consistently disappointing, getting called chokers. Right? I, had to, I had to deal with it twice. But then when they won, Dragons won the grand final in 2010, Liverpool won the Premier League again, uh, this year, the year of recording, 2020, after some COVID uncertainty. Those titles, those experiences were prolific. Now, if they'd won again the next year, and I'm hoping Liverpool will, although they're in the middle of a huge injury crisis right now, it's not the same. It's not as powerful. Because the tension hasn't been built up as long. Now, in some cases, we want the outcome. We want the title. But outcomes are diminishing returns. The greater the tension, the more release achieving the outcome will have because more tension has been built up. But when tension can't build up as much because we've adapted to it, we've gotten used to it, it's not the same. It's still great winning but it doesn't pro provide as much joy. And so that that's why we continue to want more, you know? And in, in football, soccer, whatever your preferred word, is a great example. You know, when teams win their, in their country, they want to win in Europe. When teams win in Europe, but they haven't won in their own country, they want to win in their own country. They're always looking for more. It's never enough. When it is enough, everyone else is more motivated and they rise up to knock you off your perch. So it's this dynamic, this give and take, this ebb and flow. So when our journeys and our achievements are what we're trying to derive all our joy and satisfaction from and ticking off milestones, uh, it's the, well, we're at major risk for a diminishing return. And that's why it's important to play football, soccer or rugby league or hide and seek, enjoying the game all the way through. It might not feel 10 out of 10. It'd be very hard for it to feel 10 out of 10 the whole way through. That's where we can't start to get into the reality of our existence. But if you don't enjoy it and you're only waiting for a title, a title is risky. But even if you win the title, it's just a release of tension. And so... We have to enjoy playing the game. But then again, if we enjoy playing the game, we probably don't have to worry as much about the outcome. Now, Rugby League NRL has a salary cap. They try and make the league more uh, democratic. It doesn't quite work out that way. Dragons haven't been doing that well lately. But in the Premier League, uh, where Liverpool play, there is no salary cap. And normally a couple of teams dominate and the other teams settle for mid-table or they struggle to stay in the division. Yet it doesn't deter people from supporting those clubs and it doesn't stop those players from playing the game. Even though there's no clear outcomes. And I love that lesson that even when there's no outcomes, the game can still be exciting. Now, I underestimated this topic. I thought it was, we were going to cover the games in two episodes, right, of the With Joe Weeby podcast. But I think looking at what we've got is actually going to be two more after this because we've still got some stuff to cover, some seeds I planted in the previous episode. So we're going to make sure that we do that. So I ask for your patience. Hopefully I'll be able to see you again when we come back tomorrow. In the meantime, if you're just joining us for the first time, I do recommend going all the way back to the start and listening to this podcast from the introduction an episode uh, one about the minimum viable lifestyle because they are released in an order that I think makes the most sense to consume them. Um, but apart from that, there's a lot of resources I could talk about, but the most important thing to remember until we come back next time is our same consistent message that the best way to open a thousand doors for you is to concentrate on opening doors for others. We'll be back talking about these games tomorrow. And this has been the With Joe Weeby podcast.